compare these two blocks of code. If you feel that version A looks a lot easier to read, but your code looks like version B, then I can tell you, you will need a large refactoring. No matter which framework you use, you should always write templates that are easy to read because this will save you time during development and during debugging. Number two, don't copy paste, never. As a beginner, it is very tempting to go to a documentation page or to Stack Overflow and just copy paste some code to then use it in your project. I can tell you there is a high chance that you will always have issues because some of the code doesn't behave as you expect. So my recommendation is that you read all these words and you try to understand exactly what they mean. Then you can take away only what you need and that will prevent any big surprises for you. Mistake number three, not reviewing your own code. When you go camping, there's a rule that says you should leave the place as clean as you found it or even better. So in our case, as code developers, this means you should try to clean up the code before you start writing a new feature on top of it. Always try to review the code and see if the call stack does what you expect, because you might find additional problems that you are not aware of. This might save you a lot of time, and usually it's very good to understand the foundation, because then like you can properly build the feature itself. Problem number four, not using aliases. Let's have a look at this if statement. As you can see, it's by no means easy to read. When I see such code, my initial reaction is to separate the contents of the if statement and assign them to a variable that has an easy to read name. This is usually making your life a lot easier by labeling code in a way that is easy to understand, right? So you heard many times the idea of like, your code should be self-document. Well, how do you do it? Well, by using aliases. And that's just one tiny example, but there are so many other examples. If you see that you have to spend time in your code trying to understand what's going on, maybe you should be using more aliases. Five, not having a state store. If you're writing a complex application, like say, for example, Visual Space, I would strongly encourage you to use a state store solution. Here you can see we have like multiple regions all being fed with different sets of data on screen and all composing the greater picture. So take, for example, this region, it has a different part of the state store which stores the post and then this part gets replaced by the content of the discussions when we change the route. So a state store solution makes our lives easier by separating every single other state into a location that is easy to access from different parts of the widget tree. Not knowing the difference between smart and dumb widgets. Having a state store is the first step to improve your application architecture. However, the next challenge is figuring out where to place your subscriptions in the widget tree. Now, you see in the article page, we have a lot of widgets and all of them are subscribed to the state store. In the previous version, we had an issue with the sticky bar because it was creating animation junk. This was happening because the entire page was subscribed to the state store. Now, the solution was to actually move the subscriptions inside of the children, which made them smart. So therefore, when the page scrolls and we trigger the sticky bar animation, we no longer see animation junk because the build cycle is a lot lighter for the entire article page. So you have to be very aware of what triggers build in our application and how much effort was required from the Flutter framework to make it happen. This is number seven, your methods are too long. Here we have an example of a method that has too many concerns. As you can see, there are too many lines of code in the same body and that makes your life a lot harder when it comes to the maintenance or debugging of this method. A solution would be to break it apart into smaller methods. As you can see here, we have just a set of names that we can read and understand what's happening. It takes a bit of more time, but that makes your life a lot easier when maintaining this application. Number eight, not having clear domain boundaries. Let's use once again the example of visual space. Here you can see we have several modules such as article, posts, and chats. All of them are supposed to be working independent of each other. That means if one of them fails, then the others can continue working without failing themselves. This is called loose coupling and it can be achieved by having clear domain boundaries. It takes a bit of practice to get to this level of understanding of your code base, but I do recommend that you strive to go there. Number nine, overusing inheritance. Whenever I write new code, I try to write it as simple as possible. My goal is to avoid situations like this one. 
Here you can see a class that inherits from several mix scenes and an entire base class. This entire scope contains over 5000 lines of code and it is rather hard to comprehend. You can fight against this problem by using composition instead of inheritance. This requires quite some training and this training cannot be done in half a minute. So I do encourage you to subscribe to follow more such tutorials when they show up. Number 10. Not documenting your code. Whenever you write a new feature, it's quite easy to get carried away and forget to document anything. That will be a bit of a problem once you get back to this code after six months. You'll forget everything what was done here and it will be rather difficult for you to start debugging or maintaining this page. So a solution is usually to explain why you choose a certain architecture or a certain technique for the uh, particular page that you've been building or like anything that is outstanding. It takes some practice to get into this habit, but it will save you a lot of time. Obviously, people don't like if you comment all over the place for every single little thing. So you shouldn't be commenting what is going on. You should be commenting why is it happening this way. Number 11, files that are too long. I've been through several projects by now and I've seen this issue happening quite a few times. It's even done by expert senior developers. You see this particular page here, we have like over 2000 lines of code. This is not something that's easy to understand or to maintain. Even worse is that here in this particular file, we have over 33 classes. That's something that goes beyond insane for me. So I would definitely recommend to you that you start making each of these classes a distinct file that will make your life easier and it will help you navigate the project a lot faster. 12. No project structure. If we take a look in this project, you can see a rather simplistic folder structure. So we have only a few folders. They are uh, These files are grouped by file type. So we have here models, we have translations, utils and widgets. That's not enough for a library that has over 20,000 lines of code. For the past year, I've been working on improving this library. And one of the things that I did was to split it into modules. Now you can see and understand far better what's available in this uh, library. It's something that makes our life easier because we can quickly navigate to the files that we need. Number 13, no planning. If you write uh, any project that is expected to last longer than three months or six months, I would definitely advise you to use a solution for tracking your tickets, at least something that is a Kanban board. You can use Trello or Jiro, but you can go further than this. You can create an entire roadmap for the project and you can plan ahead the features per mount spare uh, feature type and that will make your collaboration with the team a lot more effective. 14. Not having consistent patterns throughout your code base. This is a problem that I've seen in numerous projects again and again. It happens even for experienced developers and it can happen to you as well. Each team has its own conventions. For example, if you join my team, you'll find that we have a certain way of doing the subscriptions. What I do expect from all the team members is that we all use the same conventions. That makes our code base consistent. And I know each time when I go to a new modules, I know what to expect and then I know how to fix it. That saves time and that makes our code a lot more reliable. 15. Premature optimization. It can happen to all of us. It's quite easy to get carried away trying to polish something before it's done. For example, here in this page, I have a lot of components that are moving all together. After years of experience, I've learned that I should await until like the design is stable and then I should try to finish up and improve, you know, performance issues. For example, here I changed many times the layout and position of icons. I changed many times the relation between all these elements. So uh, having the experience not to do over optimization, I avoided improving my animations before having a stable version of this page. Overthinking performance. Over the years, I've seen many occasions when people got carried away trying to improve a little uh, array loop or trying to save a little bit of memory when in fact their entire template had major performance issues. I would like to teach you in the upcoming episodes how to recognize if your layout is broken and how to fix problems coming from the layout. You know, sometimes it's quite easy to get a big performance bottleneck by simply triggering too many builds. This is far greater an issue compared to trying to save a few bytes of memory, right? 
17. Not having any design or UX experience. I've started my web development career as a designer, so for me the words pixel perfect have a far deeper meaning than the average backend developer. I've seen many people having problems selecting the right opacity or color for such lines, or I've seen many times the wrong paddings on elements like cards, or for example the text were having the wrong padding or the wrong font. Uh, it's quite often to see elements that are misplaced and don't have equal paddings between them and so on. These issues are quite often encountered with developers that don't consider design a skill that has to be improved. I am of the other opinion. I think you should definitely spend time improving your design skills because this can create a far better user experience for your users of the app, right? So. Here you can see a UI that was designed from scratch. I'm not even using material framework here. I'm just creating all the elements from scratch. Of course, I don't expect you to do the same, but at least you should develop an intuition of what makes a good design. 18. Not mastering your code editor. All modern EDAs provide several productivity features such as jump to file, such as find and replace, you have the uh, static analysis tools. For example, here you can see that we've discovered a deprecation event. One of the libraries requires us that we change our implementation. We can learn about this before the new library comes in and destroys our code. That's something where the EDA helps us. There's also a long list of hotkeys that you can learn to speed up your typing routine. And if you master the EDA, you can end up writing code twice as fast as you used to do. Mistake 19. No LinkedIn profile. I bet you are not expecting me to say this, but uh, all developers should have a LinkedIn profile. It's a very good practice to update your LinkedIn profile or your resume, keep a list of all your past experiences and do try to explain what you've been doing in that particular area. So this will be highly useful for you for several reasons. First of all, it improves your skills of presentation. Second of all, you can get a lot of good offers. So you see, I get a lot of messages. Many times I don't have the ability to answer all of them. But I do tell you, when I'm in need of switching jobs, then I can quickly find a new contract. And that is very easy to do based on a very good profile. And to have a good profile, you need to practice updating it.